Welcome back. We're here today to talk about ignition timing. This is going to be one of many sections that I do on ignition timing, and today we are going to focus on the timing light. If you would like to see some of the other videos on timing, make sure you check out the playlist about ignition timing. We've got essentially two different styles of timing light. We've got this one which is fixed. If you notice on the back, there's no adjustment, there's nothing. There's just buttons on the front that you pull. And I'm going to set this one off to the side because it is filthy and just holding it, I am getting uh, dirty. It has not been used in a while, that's why it's filthy. Now that I've set the fixed timing light down, this is an adjustable timing light. And those are basically your two styles, either fixed or adjustable. If you look at the back of this one, we have a digital readout and some buttons to use. And we'll get into that a little bit later. The other style of adjustable just has a dial on the back and they're actually maybe a little bit easier to use. This one can get a little bit annoying when you're trying to do something and you have to figure out which, which button to press. Before we even get started, I'm going to be using our favorite Fox Body Mustang here with the 351 Cleveland. This car has an MSD ignition, which means that it fires the spark plug three times below 3000 RPM. This particular digital timing light is one of the cheaper ones and actually has a little bit of problem with that sometimes. Once you get over 3000 RPM, it switches back to a single spark and it has no problem. But as we're doing this demo, if that light's acting a little bit weird, it could very well be because this timing light and MSD ignitions don't always get along the greatest. I'm not actually going to use the fixed timing light. If you adjust your adjustable timing light to zero degrees, it acts just like a fixed timing light. So here's how a timing light works. We have three connections to make. We have positive battery, negative battery, and then an inductive lead for the spark plug. And if you look at this one, there's actually a picture of a spark plug here with an arrow telling you that that goes towards the spark plug. So when we hook this up, this is actually directional on the spark plug wire. If you've got a car like this Mustang where the battery is not located under the trunk and there's no easy way to hook these up, it's probably just out of frame, but I have a battery just sitting on the floor right there that I'm going to hook these up to. You can use a spare battery, you can use a jump pack, probably not a battery charger because it's not going to be steady enough to actually work a timing light, but battery or jump pack work quite well if you don't have a battery under the hood. When using a timing light to check your timing, there are essentially two spots that you're going to really pay attention to, and that is idle or base timing and all in timing, which I will discuss in a different video. But the quick version is idle or base timing is checked with the engine at normal idle. All in timing is checked with the engine revved up to where the timing, the mechanical timing advance quits advancing. These two leads are pretty self-explanatory. Positive battery, negative battery, or jump pack or spare battery. This one is a little bit less obvious. So it says hook it up to a spark plug. It's got a picture of a spark plug on it. Which one? All of your ignition timing is set off of cylinder number one. Now, if you're not sure where cylinder number one is, you can check out my video where I go over cylinder numbering or search up your vehicle. If you're a Chevy or a Mopar guy and you decide to try your hand at Ford, they're in the wrong spot. Number one spark plug on this 351 is up here farthest forward on the passenger side. Your Chevy and Chrysler, number one is farthest forward on the driver's side. So this is how the light itself works. It takes power from your battery and then uses this inductive pickup lead to tell when cylinder number one is firing. It then takes that information and when you pull this trigger here, it creates a strobe light out of this end, which creates a freeze frame on the harmonic balancer or timing components. Some of your old vans would actually do this off the torque converter in the back of the engine. But most of your vehicles use the 
front end of the engine with the timing component. Let's go over what those timing marks look like on a couple of different engines. I have a 350 Chevy sitting over there on the floor that has the timing components really well exposed so I can show you. And then we've got this 351 Cleveland which has some aftermarket parts and actually makes it a little bit easier to show as well. Here's a 350 Chevy, I believe this one's a 78. If we look down here, this is your timing cover, this is your timing tab. On Chevys, the large notch is always zero degrees. And if you have an adjustable timing light, that's the only one you need to worry about. If you are using a fixed timing light with this type of balancer, you actually have to figure out what all these tabs are. And to be honest, this one's a little bit too rusty to read. I believe that each notch, which you probably can't really see, is either two or four degrees. And I believe this last indent here is right around 12. So that's useful for setting your base timing but not useful for setting all in. The other mark you need to be concerned with is on the balancer. I've put a little bit of paint marker on this one. If you're trying to do this, if you mark the balancer, it makes it a lot easier to see in the freeze frame. Sometimes it's pretty difficult. If this engine were fully assembled, there would be a water pump right here, and you would actually be looking down at it from the top. So there'd be like a water pump here, and that's the view you would get. One of the things that I hear every once in a while is it's a 350 Chevy. 350 Chevys are all the same. I have a timing cover here off of another 350 Chevy. Notice where our timing tab is on this, on this timing cover. It's almost to the edge. Now take a look at where the timing tab is on this engine. The other timing tab is over here. So we are quite a ways off. The balancer and the timing tab are made to work together. So if you've got a 350 or a small block Chevy, that's one of the things you need to be concerned with, is where exactly is my timing mark and is it lined up? You can use the companion cylinder to get close enough to figure out if these marks are in the right place. 351 has an aftermarket balancer that actually has timing marks all the way around. But I have a large hash mark at zero, and then a small hash mark at 20 and 34, which are the two spots that we're going to be looking out for. You're not gonna be able to actually hear me once I start this engine up. So I'm just gonna explain it first. What I'll do is set up my timing light, which I already showed you, and then I will fire this engine up. I will fire this engine up. Now I tried this with a different video camera the other day and I couldn't actually capture it. So we'll see what we get today. But I will start out when I hold one finger up. That means I have the timing light, the adjustable timing light set at zero degrees, which is going to show exactly like a non adjustable or a fixed timing light. At idle, it should be very close to this 20 mark. When I hold up two fingers, that will mean that I changed my adjustable timing light to 20 degrees, and it should be very close to this mark down here. Then when I hold up three fingers, that will indicate that I have set the timing light to 33 degrees, which we will then rev the engine at that point. With the timing light advance moved, we should stay set up with the zero mark on the balancer. If we had a fixed light, we would have to find the marks and go for them. The fixed light would work on this particular balancer, but it does not work with a lot of factory timing components. I guess I didn't point this out yet, but this little arm right here, that's what we are trying to line these marks up with. The Mustang does not have vacuum advance, but most of your vehicles are going to have a canister like this with a line like this run off of it up to the carburetor or manifold vacuum. If you are doing a mechanical adjustment check, this line must be disconnected from the, va from the distributor and you should plug this line temporarily 
with either uh, another piece of rubber hose and a bolt, a golf tee, all kinds of stuff like that. But just so you know, if you are checking mechanical timing, you need to make sure that the vacuum is disabled. In order to hook up your timing light, you simply take your inductive lead, make sure that the arrow is pointed towards the spark plug, and clamp it around the number one spark plug wire. I like to try to keep that away from the other spark plug wires while we're testing. Now down at the battery end, we hook our positive, our red lead to our positive post on the battery and our black lead to the negative post on the battery. <clears throat> Once we do that, this particular timing light has two different spots. We have RPM, which is at zero because we're not running. And then timing advance, which we can adjust anywhere from zero to, I guess I really don't know how far forward it can go. But we'll start out with zero during this testing. As you can see during the demonstration there, when I had the timing light set at zero, it gave a very different view than when I had it set at different advance rates. And honestly, I had not tried it at zero before. It makes me question the accuracy of my timing light. The car seems to run really well, but I could not get the fixed timing light to actually work today, which is why it was dusty and dirty. So I don't really have anything to compare with on this particular car. Now, I am going to go back in and adjust the timing curve a little bit based on what I saw during this video. It seems to keep advancing up into the 4000 plus RPM range, which is fine as long as it doesn't advance too much during that time. And this one looks like it may be. That's been a quick how to use a timing light. And like I said, this car has MSD, which kind of messes with my timing light because it is a cheap one and uh, I'm gonna go back and mess around with this ignition a little bit more and we'll do some videos on that kind of stuff later thanks for watching if you enjoyed this go ahead like subscribe all that stuff if you haven't noticed when something screws up I do actually show it and it happens pretty much anytime you put a camera or a group of people to watch you you're gonna have problems so you'll see that from time to time in here and I'll see you later.